You look at the world and it feels like we are the most disconnected that we have ever been. We spend more time doing things that keep us in isolation than the things that truly connect us. But I don't think it needs to be like this. So I hitchhiked my way from Halifax to Vancouver to try and prove to myself and others what is possible when you put yourself out there and truly connect with one another. And this is my story. This is literally the highway going west and there's f***ing nobody. How oh, fuck he's pulling in here. Sir? And what kind of tense situations did you get into? I got picked up by a sexual predator. Uh, that one got real tense. And, yeah. Uh, I stabbed him in the throat with the fingernail filed on a pair of nail clippers. Currently about to hitchhike out of my hometown that I grew up in. It's a really weird feeling. Not once did I ever think that I'd be hitchhiking out of my hometown. Hey, what's your name, by the way? I'm Nathan. Nathan? Brad. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice meet you. Hitchhiking had this media attention back in the day, back when a few people in the state started deciding that's how they were going to be either killers or pick their kidnappies was picking them up. Media focused on it so hard for just such a period of time that like after that period of time, it was taboo yeah. to hitchhike or be picked up. I'm really sad that the media did that to hitchhiking because I think it's an actually fairly good way to travel, especially yeah. if you're young. I love picking up hitchhikers. Like it's conversation. Oh, Other yeah. than this, I would have been so bored for the next hour. Like, yeah, yeah. Have a good one. Have a good one. Later. Good luck. Thank you so much. Honestly, I think I'm getting more and more comfortable on the highway. Originally, like when I was in New Brunswick, holy f I was super, super uncomfortable. And I was like, I don't think I'm gonna get a ride at all. But now, it seems like every time I get to that point, somebody always comes and picks me up and it's usually somebody pretty cool. Dean? Dean? Brad. Nice to meet you, Dean. Nice to meet you. Have you ever uh, picked up a hitchhiker before? Uh, no, but I did hitchhike all through my childhood. Really, really? Yeah. Awesome. I was doing some busking on the street, up juggling fire and stuff. I ended up meeting this musician. Uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, come back to meet my brother and like my roommates and stuff. We'll eat dinner and then we're gonna go to this party. And we all pile into this van. We start driving out into the woods and we're driving for like probably 45 minutes. It's like nothing. It's just trees. <laughs> and me and my friend in a car full of like strangers. And I'm like. Okay, I'm like gonna die. Like I'm like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? We come to this clearing, and there's like this huge cabin. It looks like a mansion. Yeah. In the middle of the forest, there's people everywhere doing like fire boy and like hula hoops, juggling fire. There's a balcony on the second floor. There's like a live band playing. It was the craziest thing ever. Yeah. Like, I ended up spending the entire summer there with my friend. Oh, And God. Uh, well, I was probably 16 at the time. And I'm really? Trying, I'm 28 now, and I, I still talk to those guys. Really? Yeah. Dean dropped me off in Toronto and I made my way to my old house in Oakville to surprise my roommates. Oh, what the f <laughs> we were just talking about you, that was so funny. Really? Yeah, yeah. What is this? Yeah, I know, two seconds ago. We're like, Brad, like, well, we haven't heard a word from this guy. Yeah, I know, he hasn't commented <laughs> in the message board at all. The batteries arrived a few days later and I made my way back to Toronto where I was meeting another friend who had offered to drive me out of Toronto the next morning. This is Stefan. Dude, where are you driving me? Out of Toronto? Barry, we'll figure it out. <laughs> About an hour. This is what I'm going to be looking at for the next three days. Yeah. I, I think once you hit to, like the prairies, it's going to be tough. It's just all flat, boring land. So you're going to have to find someone that is doing the same trip. It's going to be tough. Make friends with a trucker. <laughs> I, that's like actually a plan of mine. Especially this guy like a funky in the back of his truck. Yeah, he's <laughs> cuddled. <laughs> it's like I've been lonely for a week. <laughs> Thanks for the ride, dude. Have a good one. Let me know how it goes today. All right, later, dude. This is where things start to get a little bit interesting. I was beginning to realize how lucky I was with the rides up until Toronto. The highways were busy and there was always a city close by that I could stop in in case something went wrong. Now I have to cover an incredibly long distance and to put it into perspective, to get out of Ontario from where I am is the same distance that I've traveled since I started this trip. And there's not a lot in between here in Manitoba. The only main cities really are Sudbury, Sault Ste. Marie and Thunder Bay. And it's about an eight hour drive between Sault Ste. Marie and Thunder Bay. That's a long way to get hitchhiking. It's getting really, really, really hot. This is gonna suck. Ugh. So if I don't have luck getting a ride, I might end up stuck in a bad place and have to set up camp in the middle of nowhere. And I have no food with me, so 
It's definitely going to be a challenge. How's it going? Not bad. Yourself? Not bad. I'm going as far as Sudbury. Sudbury is perfect, yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, what's your name, by the way? My name is Dave. Dave? Brad. Brad? Nice, nice to meet you. Brad. Have you ever picked up a hitchhiker before? Not very often. Okay, but Not you have often, before? I have. Oh, yeah, I have. I'm just driving by myself and going up for the weekend. I'm yeah. going to my town and anniversary party, so if somebody needs a ride, why not? Have you gone west after uh, Sudbury at all? The farthest I drove from Sudbury west would be to Winnipeg. Okay. Farthest I've heard Wawa area. is like hitchhiker hell, apparently. Oh, because there's nothing out there. Yeah, so like, like you're, you're not getting picked up. <laughs> yeah. You might be camping on the side. Historical. Yeah. French River is part of the route of the voyagers. Fur trading was a big thing back in the day, and this was a major fur trading route. Uh, yeah, again, thank you so much. And I really Brad, appreciate it. Happy Enjoy. trails, buddy. Hope everything works out for you. Get there nice and safe. So I am, I guess, a little bit outside of uh, Sudbury right now. There's a cop up there. There's two bad possibilities for this entire trip. One, I get robbed, I lose my camera. Two, I get ticketed, which apparently is like $800, and I cannot afford $800 right now. Oh fuck, he's pulling in here. Is everything okay, sir? Yeah, yeah, I just got into, if you, uh... Sudbury. What, like, cause hitchhiking technically isn't allowed, like I've, I've, Is that why you dirted back in here? No, I'm kind of waiting for, there was a guy who was gonna give me a, a ride here, maybe in one of the trucks, but he's, said no now, so. Yeah, you can't be on the highway soliciting a ride. Because mm -hmm. I have been on the highway doing it. I have traveled towards the highway, but we can be on the side. You be safe, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, well that was, oh boy. I don't know what the travel part of the highway means. I wasn't 100% sure at the time if I would get in trouble for getting back on the highway, so I waited for him to drive away before I got back on the road. I had to walk about 20 minutes down the road until I found a spot where I thought it would be good for people to pull over. But there was one problem. This was the highway, and it was dead. This is actually starting to get a little bit concerning. The sun is starting to get lower. I don't know, I'll probably have to set up my hammock for the first time. I spent about an hour and a half waiting and maybe 40 cars drove by. I had posted on my Instagram about my situation and I got a message from a girl who happened to live nearby. She said she could come pick me up and I could stay at her place. This girl happened to have saw my post in the same Facebook group that I met Aline from. I think this might be her. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Good. <laughs> Melissa, by the way. Melissa, nice to meet you. Yeah, no, you just saved my life. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah. <laughs> This is your truck here. Yeah, that's, that's my old boy. Old. Wow. So, Melissa here saved my life and came and picked me up on the highway, and their whole family just made me dinner, which is <laughs> awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. That job was marked for 27 years. Now. Yeah. Okay. Half of those days in 27 years. Yeah. I've been alone. Because he's been on the road. Yes. Oh yeah, you're making it sound so destitute. Well, when I was God. little, he no, was but that's so long, that's the reality of it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was confused and I didn't understand he was my dad because I didn't recognize him. He was so long. I mean, I was really little though. Yeah. Well, I worked for Duck X. I was only home twice, I think, in three months. Yeah. Wow. I mean, three months is about my home time for the year, out of twelve months. Like, was that was that hard for you? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I've always known him to not always be here. Like when he worked out west he was gone for two weeks and then he was home for two weeks so i liked that more because i got mm. more time with him home yeah and now i, I feel like, like he gets home and then you blink and then he has to leave again <clears throat> and you know you just miss out on father daughter time is it hard like for you to, like well being gone when they were little, little little it was worse because they yeah. changed so much in a week like i'd come home they would actually they like change so much yeah and then if i was gone for two weeks well whew. It was like new people moved in the house. And yeah. Like, Holy shit. It's like a whole another world that like people just don't, I no, would never don't understand. No, like, appreciate. Yeah. yeah. People really don't yeah. appreciate truck drivers. Yeah, it's it all dependent on us and nobody realizes well, it. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is awesome. <laughs>
After chatting for a while, they invited me to join them outside for a bonfire. Brad, this is Heather. Hey, how's it going? This is Brad. Brad nice, to nice to meet you. you. <laughs> I'm your uh, your brother for the day or the night. Yeah. yeah I was hitchhiking. Hi. Melissa made me pick him up and bring him home. <laughs> Just the weirdest request that you've had from her. Um, yeah, I'm thinking that's up there pretty good, yeah. Go yeah. and pick up a stranger off the highway and bring him home for supper and say that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's up there. Yeah. We sat around the fire and told stories to each other back and forth for a few hours. It was nice. It made me feel like home. Her dad really reminded me of my dad. He was a storyteller. And some of my favorite times with my dad were when we sat around the fire and I would listen to him tell me stories of his life. His family were complete strangers before, but now it felt like I was a part of the family. This is the uh, the bed here. This is the bed, yeah. All you right. got the a sheet and a blanket. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No problem. Come on, Joe. 11 hours from here to Thunder Bay, right? 12. 12. 12. It just, it'll take me a couple <clears throat> days to get over there. It's very possible. Dude. Yeah. I mean, you might hook up with somebody, like you say, take you to the Sioux. Or, I mean, if you're going to Wawa, it's like... You say, oh, geez, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to yeah, pass that right up. <laughs> yeah, I heard Wawa is bad for you. Come on, I want a hug before you leave. Thank you so oh, much. You're quite welcome. It's I want to know about uh, your trip. So. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, sister, oh. see you later. <laughs> yeah. So nice meeting you. Yeah. Safe travel. Thank you so much. Melissa and her dad drove me to the gas station by the highway, and from there we parted ways. See ya. I will definitely cherish my time spent with her family, but it was time to get back to the trip. I decided to stay there and try my luck asking the truck drivers for a ride. How's it going? Not bad. Are you from the area or not? No, no, I'm actually uh, hitchhiking across Canada right now. Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would I be able to ask you a quick question? I'm going to Toronto. Ah, uh, Toronto? Dang. They don't miss the English. Oh, okay, fair enough. No, for me, if you're going yeah, to actually, to be very honest, to my company policy, I can't give uh, you anyway. No I'm sorry, bro. So we got another strike. It seems like a lot of these companies are just not allowing their drivers to pick up hitchhikers anymore. So that's making it very difficult. I waited for about an hour at the gas station, but there wasn't a truck in sight. Sudbury was proving to be the most difficult place I had to get out of so far. I decided the best option was for me to walk back out on the highway and try my luck there again. Melissa's dad told me about a spot about 15, 20 minutes further down the road than I was before that was a better place for me to catch a ride. The only problem is I'd have to commit to staying out there as I'd be just wasting time walking back and forth. How's it going? I had an extra seat, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was funny. I'm near nothing. No civilization. A man in the wild. I found the spot around two o'clock and I immediately put on a big smile and held my thumb out high and proud. There was no way I was getting stuck in Sudbury again. I'm having absolutely no luck. It's hot as f out here. I just want to get the f out of Ontario. How's it going? Right. Where are you guys heading? Same way you are. Good yeah? Day. Thank you very much. Stranded in a bad spot. If you're like me, you're probably thinking that sounds a little bit sketchy and I probably shouldn't get in. Well, standing in the heat in the middle of nowhere didn't sound that great either, so I went for it. How's your day going? Better than yours. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever uh, picked up a hitchhiker before? Yeah. Yeah? How old are you? I'm 23. I put on about 200,000 miles hitchhiking by the time I was your age. Wow. Not many people get to experience this. Like, you know, a lot of people are really down on it when I did it because it was dangerous. I ran into a couple tense situations, but only a couple. And what kind of tense situations did you get into? Uh, I got picked up by a sexual predator. Wow. And that one got real tense. And, yeah. Uh, I stabbed him in the throat with the fingernail file on a pair of nail clippers. When he grabbed his neck, I grabbed the steering wheel and ditched the car and yeah. jumped out. Four or five minutes later, uh, RCMP stopped and picked me up. I told him what I had happened. Yeah. He knew right away who it was. He was oh, a wow. local guy that was a yes, a sexual predator. He had been arrested several times. 
Perfect. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate yeah. uh, the ride. Yeah, there are a few uh, nice people still left in Ireland. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what, I'm gonna have like five oh, bad yeah. people, but there's yeah. gonna be one one good person yeah, here yeah. who will stop. So yeah, they're around. Just be careful on your trip. Like try to get a ride from the Sioux all the way out and up as far as you can, because like it gets desolate out there. It's like yeah, you're in the middle yeah. of nowhere, buddy. Yeah. So if you can get from the Sioux to uh, uh, as far up as you can, yeah. you can get all the way through, you can be better off. Like, cool. Well, thank you very much, eh? Okay, bud. Yeah, it was great meeting you. Have good good luck on your trip. Have a blast. That was definitely a nerve-wracking ride at first, but the two guys ended up being incredibly nice. It goes to show you that sometimes your fears aren't always right. Sometimes it's the opposite of what you think. I sat down for a quick bite to eat before getting back on the road, and as I was walking back to the highway, I saw a truck driver walk into his truck, and I decided to ask him for a ride. How are you doing today? I was wondering if there's any chance you were going west, and I could tag along with you for a little bit. Yeah, man, and not supposed to pick it up nobody. Yeah. Or maybe sign some paper for... Would that be possible? Sign here? So basically the form he gave me is saying that his company isn't liable for me if anything happens. So if he gets in a car crash and I get hurt, it's on me. But that's fine. All I cared about is getting to Sault Ste. Marie. Alright, good to go? Yeah. Sounds good. Have you uh, drove many people before? Two times. Two times? Yes. Not many times. The first time you go in the West? Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. More long to uh, full pass is Ontario. Yeah. And to bar, uh, picture change. Yeah. They flow. <laughs> flat. Flat. Yeah. yeah. And to bar, it's flat. When the words were loud, the long we thought old age, I still hear you in many other ways. And if I fall blind, I will see you the same. I will always find a way. Thank you for the ride. No problem. Really appreciate it. Good, good ride for the rest of the road. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. All right, so I am in Sault Ste. Marie. It's either I set up my hammock tonight or I go check out this university and see if somebody will let me stay there. I walked about 15 to 20 minutes towards the university and I walked around looking for people to talk to, but it was a ghost town. There's literally nobody. There's nobody on this campus. I tried to see if I could get into any of the buildings to see if there was anyone inside, but they were all locked. Hmm. I don't want to spend too much time just wandering around. I'm pretty tired. I want to get some sleep. I finally found one that was open, but I couldn't find anybody inside. I wasn't having the same luck that I had at the University in New Brunswick. I took a second to rest, and then I decided the best decision was to walk back towards the truck stop by the highway and look for a place to hang my hammock. That way I could get an early start to the next morning, but that didn't turn out as expected either. I have absolutely no f***ing idea what the hell I'm supposed to do. This thing came with no instructions. Uh, I thought it'd be funny to put myself in a situation where I'd have to figure out how to tie a hammock in the middle of the night. Great f***ing idea that was. Since I couldn't set up the hammock, the next best option was to try to get some sleep in the truck stop. I've been here for an hour and a half. I can't fall asleep because How I Met Your Mother is on repeat and it's extremely cold in here. Morale's getting like super, super low right now. It's 3.30 in the morning, but I've moved to a different truck stop that was across the street. It's now five o'clock in the morning. I think I slept for maybe like 20 minutes. It's gonna be really hard to make it through if I, if I have to keep doing this. I wasn't gonna get any sleep, so I brushed my teeth, I watched the sunrise, and then I started asking truckers for a ride. Excuse me, sir. Are you uh, headed out west by any chance? No, you're heading, heading the opposite way. Ah, fair enough. But it seemed like my bad luck wasn't much. finished with me yet. Yeah, sorry about that, by the way. Well, well, that's fine. We get, like I said, a lot of regular customers, and some of the guys are pretty good about it, some of them get a little bit upset, and we don't allow any soliciting. You know? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't wanna. Sell tickets here. Fair but enough. yeah, but you're welcome to use facilities, whatever, yeah, by all means. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Right, Appreciate you. it. The manager of the truck stop politely asked me to leave, so my only option was to get back on the road. I've been here since six in the morning, and it's been six hours. If I'm not getting a ride by now, I'm really getting scared actually. This is worrying me. I don't think I'm gonna get a ride.
next episode on the Hitchhiking Web Series. So, remember how I said there was a place called Wawa, Ontario that I needed to avoid at all costs because it was hitchhiker hell? Well, welcome to Wawa, Ontario.